even if rabbis in this generation are misinterpreting the real intention of the Creator, the real will of the Creator, it doesn't mean that you need to follow their mistake. You need to follow Hashem. After 120 years, they're going to judge you on who that you were in life. Who you really were. What was your real intention in life? What was your real meaning? What was your real will? Who were you? When they were screaming at you, when they were telling you, when they were offering you, when they were rebuking you, who were you? Who are you? Who are you in time of crisis? Who are you in time of pain? Who are you in time of joy? When you're succeeding, what are the thoughts that are crossing your mind? When you're failing, what are the thoughts that are crossing your mind? Okay, and now the question is, and what are you doing with those thoughts? When you realize that you're arrogant, or when you realize that you were so humble, what are you doing with those thoughts? Are you staying humble after realizing that you were humble? Are you staying arrogant after realizing that you were arrogant? Or that you're doing tshuva? Or that you're humbling yourself? Because if there, even, even after a failure, if you did tshuva and you came back to Hashem, you reach such a high level that that can be the purpose of why Hashem Yitbarach failed you in the first place. Hashem doesn't want you to suffer. Hashem doesn't want you to fail. Hashem wants to give you a gift that is from the world of beyond, from the world to come. An eternal gift that you will be able to spend eternity with Him. What does it mean? To know Him first. To know who that He is. So who is He? When someone is calling you names, when someone is shaming you, insulting you, rebuking you, when someone is uncovering your weaknesses, when someone is putting the flashlights on your wounds, on the most sensitive places, who is that person for you? Is he an enemy? Or that he's your best friend that helps you to recognize the points that you need to fix? We need to love the rebuke. Because God rebukes the one that He loves. The rebukes, the shames, the insultings, the pains, the failures that we are experiencing in our life, they have a purpose. They've been sent to us from heaven, from the loving kindness of the Creator, that He wants to help us to deal with the things that are so important and required for our purpose to accomplish to complete, to achieve perfection, to become one with Him. For that we need to fix. What you need to fix? Everyone will say, oh, so many things. Okay, you know what? So many things. Let's start. Let's start. You want to do it? Let's do it. First step. Baby steps. If you will try to make your baby run, he will fall on his face, he won't make it. Now if you're in the level of a baby and you're only crawling, that's the maximum speed that you can achieve. And once in a few minutes you need to sit and to relax and to breathe and to bring back your breath again to yourself and to reset your mind and to breathe again. So that's your level, that's your ability. God will not gonna judge you are not being able to do something that you're not able to do. He expects from you to do only what that is in your power. You should do only what that you find that is in your power to do. But if you found something that needs, that required your attention, so do that. If your wife, she's screaming, don't judge her. Oh, she's screaming. Listen. It's just a temporary world that in this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator. To remember that it's all Him. Never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.